everybody. I'm Heather Thomas Van Deren, and I would like to welcome you to the testimony series called What Love Means. Real stories from people just like you. And today I am in Weatherford, Texas on the Brazos River. It's absolutely beautiful here with my friend Kimberly Smith. <laughs> Thank you for letting us come, Kimberly. Thank you. Thank you. I can't wait to hear, hear your story. You know, stories are good. They you know, are. And, and I'll try to be a good storyteller for you. <laughs> well, especially when they're true, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. And I know that you have a lot on your heart that you want to share today. So tell us a little bit, Kimberly, about why you chose to share on What Love Means. You know, I love the title, What Love Means. You know, for, for years before I got saved, I really didn't know what love meant. And God is love, as we Amen. know. Yes. However, when you're not saved and when you come from a, a background like I came from, love, that wasn't what was demonstrated. Mm -hmm. And so I really, as until I reached my 50s or actually my 40s, I really didn't know what love meant, even though I was saved. There was a process. Mm -hmm. There was a process of, of stuff that I didn't believe. And I had to, I had to get my mind right uh, with what God said about love. And that there was a go. process. It was a big well, process. Well, it is a process because our relationship with Him grows. Yes. And the more we know God, the, the more we know about Him, so the more we know about love. Right. Tell us a little bit about your history and what drove you to search for God. Well, I was raised in a little bit of a dysfunctional home. Um, I have, I have a, a little bit, I, I have abuse in, the, in, in my childhood. So, you know, that, that daddy love that every girl wants to have, mm -hmm. like my daddy would do anything for me. I did not have that. Uh, I came from a, a sexual abuse background for most of my life until I was 12. And so when I was 12 and soon to be 16, I spun out and started looking for love. Right. In all, all the wrong, the wrong places. <laughs> right. And you know, that emptiness that I had, um, it was so driven to find. I mean, mm -hmm. because I so wanted to know what that love was. Right. And um, you know, the enemy always comes to say, this is what it is. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at this. Mm -hmm. And I ended up getting into an industry that was, was very welcoming. And um, I thought, I've arrived, you know. I started um, doing some things as a teenager, um, just stupid things. But it was <laughs> performance space where you where you received accolades of you're wonderful, you're amazing. I thought that's what love was, mm -hmm. and uh, it was exotic dancing. And so I I thought to, I thought I was finding love for myself, but it was a false love. It was a exactly. false. It was a counterfeit. Right. So I went through years of that, and uh, finally, when I was 22, uh, I was pregnant. Uh, my my husband and I we'd been married and. Um, found out t two weeks after we were going through a situation that I was pregnant with my youngest son. This was son number two. And um, I was going to have an abortion because we, ha we were having struggles. We'd been separated. I didn't even know that I was pregnant. You know, my mother uh, and stepfather said, you need to have an abortion. There's no way that you can raise two children. And I was like, okay, I don't know. And so I was working at the time for an industry and I went to my boss and I said, Sharon, I need some days off. I, I, need, I, need, I need some time off. Because I, I was struggling because I already had one child and I loved my oldest son. Right. And, and so anyway, and I didn't really believe abortion was the, the key. But right. the, the stuff that I was hearing, like, oh, it's not a it baby yet. It messes with your head. It does. Mm -hmm. So long story short, I went to my boss and she sent me down in her office. She closed the door and I felt something. I didn't know what that was, but it was the Holy Spirit. I felt the presence in that room like I have never felt before. And I said, Sharon, I'm pregnant. And Joel and I are going to get a divorce. And I can't have this baby. And I need some time off. And she said, Kimberly, God set you up. I said, Sharon, <laughs> wait. <laughs> Sharon, I, awesome. I don't know God. And, and mm. God doesn't know me. I've never been to church. Mm. 
Isn't it amazing? I thought I had to be going to church for God to know who I was. A lot of people think that. Do you know what she said to me? She goes, Kimberly, he knows the hairs on your, your head. head. Yes. And the thought of God, I mean, like God of the universe, yes. knowing me, I thought my head was spinning. <laughs> I'm like, is this true? Is this really, really true? And she goes, Kimberly, I tell you what, you can have the time off, but I want you to go home tonight. I want you just to pray. She said, Kimberly, have you ever prayed? And I said, um, no, and I, I was 25. Yeah, I had never prayed. And so I remember going home and I was kind of rough back then because I was angry. Mm -hmm. I had a hard heart is what we, what I know what it is now. Right. And I remember talking to God saying, God, you know, you know, <laughs> I can't have this baby. You know that I, I'm, I'm going to be a single mom and I can't afford it. And God, so I went, my prayer was telling God what he knew. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. He's got big shoulders. He, he can does. take it. <laughs> Do you know what happened? Because I'm pretty stubborn. And, you know, I had a really, I had a good prayer with God told him exactly what we needed to do. <laughs> I did. Yeah. It, just like we do, right? I was I was orchestrating my own life. I prayed. I went to bed that night. And guess what happened when I woke up? Can you imagine? I woke up with this overwhelming love. <laughs> and the Lord began to show me how much he loved me. Mm. And I, I weeped and cried the whole next morning. I could not have the abortion. Right. Praise the Lord. Yes. And yes. I thought, and I thought, okay, what is happening to me? What is going on? It was an encounter. Yes, it was. It was an encounter before I ever said, Jesus, come into my heart. Right. He gave me an encounter right where I was. Yes. I wasn't saved. I didn't know him. I wasn't raised in church. I wasn't raised in a Christian home. And God met me there. So after that, of course, long story short, I have a beautiful, I have two beautiful sons they are 32 and 36 now. Mm. And um, I decided, and I remember telling God after, so let me back up. I woke up and, and thought, I can't do this. So I called, canceled the appointment. I called the family and they said, you're crazy. There's no way. I said, watch me. Mm -hmm. I've got to figure this out. See, God uses stubborn women. He does. Because <laughs> I know I'm one of them. Yes, and your stubbornness can be used for His good. It can. Well, the thing, the thing I felt an encounter. Yeah. I felt His presence. And nothing can deny the presence of God. Mm. I don't care how angry you are or how off track you are or how unsaved you are. Mm -hmm. The presence of God, once you feel and experience that, there's no going back. So, so honestly, that led me on a quest, like I need to know this God. And so I did the next best thing. I checked into a local church. I became, I got saved Yay. Uh, and, and it just turned around from there. And that was, I was 25 and I'm 58 now. So that many years ago. <laughs> I know. So did you, did, was it a journey for you or were you just so on fire for the Lord at that time that it was just, you just shot off like a rocket living for him? You know, it was a journey. Um, it, it was a journey, but it was a good journey. Uh, I did become a single mom, and I raised my boys. I was in church every time the doors open. Mm. I was in this little Baptist church, and a lot of things happened there. And I thought, you know, that's really, it was real small. I was the only single girl. So I didn't have anybody to relate with. Right. You know? So it was a great church. Uh, so I went to a larger church where they had a singles group, and they had a single moms group. And I, mm -hmm. I began to look for places where I could fit in. Yes. And you know, back and grow. then. Yeah, and grow. And yeah. I did not look the part of a church girl. <laughs> I mean, if you can imagine me showing up with big makeup, <laughs> big hair, <laughs> short skirts, and, but I was just, I thought I, that was stressing up for me. So, you know, after getting all the looks and, mm, you know, <laughs> I, I began to figure out like, oh, maybe this is not proper right. for church. So the journey was learning how to be a lady. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about being a Christian. It was about being a lady and representing yourself the way that I wanted to represent myself. And so, yes, it was, an, it was a journey. It was a journey. And you wrote a book. I did. It's called Naked and Unashamed. Let's see that book. I love the cover. It's Thank so you. pretty. Thank you. This is the book. This is a 20-year story of my life. Right. And, you know, it says the uncut version. Um, and I took this to a Christian publisher, and they wouldn't publish it. Really? They wouldn't. They said, Kimberly, if you'll take out the sex part, I, I'll publish it. Oh. I said, well, 
a lot of my life before I got saved was in the sex industry. And I mean, it wasn't prostitution, but you know, yeah. exotic dancing is sex yeah. industry. And so I, again, I was crushed. It set me back because I'm thinking, yeah. okay, I'm not good enough to tell my testimony on Christian. This is... So I bet you uh, that that did not inhibit God getting that book out. It didn't <laughs> because you know, I'm determined. I'm like, because the Lord kept telling me, Kimberly, share your story. There are so many women wrapped up in um, shame, mm -hmm. uh, abandonment. They, they, they're stuck because they think they can't. How do they get that book? You can go on Amazon. It's mm -hmm. Naked and Unashamed. It's Kimberly Oliver. Uh, I just got married, so my, my name is Kimberly Oliver Smith. Right. Uh, but it's congratulations. Naked, thank by the way. you. Thank you. <laughs> but it's um, Naked and Unashamed. You can get it on Amazon. Any of the platforms. Um, but it's it's really and it's a real easy read. But it's an uncut version. I wouldn't suggest it for young women, right? Young young women. But um, there's a lot of people that have struggled in the same areas that you struggled yeah. through, and and there's going to be people that need to read that book. Right, Kimberly. What about people that are watching today or listening, but they don't know Jesus? Maybe they had that same struggle as you did, looking for love in all the wrong places, and not really knowing. Where to find it? How would you tell them to find Jesus? Mm. You know, that's a real easy thing. Um, you know, when I heard of Jesus as Father, my biggest deal was I had a father wound. I didn't know how. When I heard the name Father, my brain went somewhere else, and it wasn't a loving Father. And when I began to read the Scripture of all the things that God was, God did the work. That's I didn't right. have to do anything. And so... All you have to do is say, God, just like I did, I said, God, I want to know you as my father. I want you to come in my heart. I want you to embrace every part of me. And I want you to make me a brand new creature, just like you, you say you will in the Bible. And it's as simple as that. That's it is. It's do. so easy. It is. And you know, it's a process. It is. So God took me and he said, Kimberly, do this. And he began to show me little girls with daddies. And mm -hmm. he began to show me in life what I needed. I needed to see it modeled in front of me. Right. But God met every need. He said he will give you, he will meet every need you have abundantly. He's Stay such down. a good, good God. He press down, yes. running over. Run he does. overflowing. He, he does. really does because he loves us. He does. He loves us so much. Kimberly, I know there's so much more to your story. I hope people will pick up the book. I really do. And thank you so much for letting us come into your home. Thank you. And thank you. I love you. You're such a sweetheart. Congratulations for marrying a great guy. Thank you. He is pretty great. <laughs> he is pretty great. And listen, I would like to tell you if that you're watching or listening today, if you would like to be on What Love Means, all you have to do is go to countrygirlsings at live.com. That's my email. Or my website is htvministries.com. If you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, I would love to talk to you. And again, Kimberly, thank you so, so much. Thank you thank so you. much. We love you guys. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.